Hello guys, I am Sajjad Pathan and welcome to the part 4 of the single best answer question series for the emergency medicine exams. This video will cover 5 questions once again and will be based on psychiatric emergencies as demanded by one of our subscribers. But before we begin, I want to ask you to please subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. This will help you to keep up with my latest videos. And this knowledge as it spreads further not only help in exams for many but also help at the bedside while we emergency physicians take care of our patients. I also want to take this opportunity to thank you all for working hard in these stressful times. While the rest of the world can work from home, you are the real warriors who do not have the luxury to do that and you keep on fighting for your patient's safety and health day in and day out. Let me begin this video with a personal thought. Remember that excellence is a habit and your only competition every day is with you yourself. So I wish you all the best and hope you would watch the video till the end. Without further ado, let's look at the first question of the day. Which of the following suggests a medical cause as opposed to an underlying psychiatry disorder? Auditory hallucinations, visual hallucinations, flat effect, gradual progression, and the last option is talkativeness. A 75 year old male is brought in by the police for agitated behavior from the railway station. He has vomited twice in the ED. While you go to talk to him, he gets angry and is pacing. He keeps talking to himself and to people in the cubicle who are not present. Which of the following suggests a medical cause as opposed to an underlying psychiatry disorder? With this question, we are highlighting the differences we need to know in terms of organic versus functional disorders and also will lay the foundation to understand the difference between delirium versus dementia. Let me set the facts straight that the features of medical causes of psychosis include acute onset and progresses rapidly, it's common in the elderly, people are disoriented, ataxic, aphasic and altered, visual hallucinations are present, not auditory, it's visual. They see things that are not present, whereas a psychiatric illness patient will hear voices. For those with experience in intensive care medicine, have you heard about ITU delirium? Yes, that patient keeps seeing things that don't exist, or do they actually are there and we don't see them? Spooky, huh? Okay, so the answer in this question is visual hallucinations. Let us now move quickly to the question number Two. Which of the following statement is true for altered sensorium in an elderly? Fluctuating confusion is seen in delirium. Most common cause of delirium is an underlying UTI. Delirious elder elderly have auditory hallucinations. Alzheimer's dementia progresses rapidly. Sleep-wake cycle is disrupted in dementia. 84-year-old lady is in the emergency department after a fall. She appears confused and the crew alerts about the foul smell of urine in her clothes. Her observations are normal except for a GCS of E2V4 M5. Her venous gas shows a BM of 7.2 and a lactate of 1.6. Which of the following statement is true for altered sensorium in an elderly? This seems a bit difficult one, but wait, it is not as difficult as it seems so. We already know that delirium is acute onset in the elderly, disoriented people, aphasic, ataxic and visual hallucinations. So the third option is out from here. Now we are left with four options. Let us see what are the differences between delirium versus dementia. In delirium, we already learned that it is rapid onset. Fluctuates. Delirium often fluctuates. That IT patient we talked about, you remember? He's not always confused. He has periods of normalcy too, so delirium fluctuates and it can last for few hours to few weeks. The sleep-wake cycle is often disrupted. They are many a time sleepy in dark mode, so they don't know whether it's day or night, so sleep-wake cycle is disturbed. Alertness is impaired and they suffer from visual hallucinations. Most common cause in the elderly is medications. This is a big one. We have been lied so far as UTI, UTI, UTI. No, it's their long list of meds. Check them. Whereas in dementia, it's usually a slow onset. You don't have a patient who slept and woke up the very next day with his data being deleted, isn't it? 
we are still not that close in technology that we saw in Matrix where data could be stored and potentially someone could steal it or delete it. So it's a gradual onset, slow progression lasting months to years. Sleep wake cycle is often normal in demented patient and they are usually very alert. The most common cause of dementia is Alzheimer's. So the right answer is fluctuating confusion is seen in delirium. For those who got that right, hats off, I would not have guessed that too. Let us see question number three. What could be the reason for this? FY2 is a slacker, somatization disorder, hypochondriasis, malingering, Munchausen syndrome. FY2 has joined the ED after completing his internal medicine rotation. He takes lamicycline for his acne for the last three months. He has booked himself on three occasions with abdominal pain and was convinced that he has tetracycline induced pancreatitis. All his investigations return normal, including a CT scan. He wants to get checked again today and asking for more tests to rule out pancreatitis. What could be the reason for this? Before we move on to the answer, let us look at certain terminologies. A slacker is a guy who is very lazy and could malinger. Symptoms are intentional and patients consciously fake stuff for secondary gains as avoiding work, getting compensations, etc. Whereas in somatization, symptoms are unintentional, they are real symptoms, many symptoms, many organs are involved. There is a variant in which patient may have neurological symptoms and this is real. All those you called pseudo seizures or hysterical coma or they may have tense hemiparesis too. But the patients may be unconcerned, also called as la belle indifference. Symptoms are real and subconscious or unconscious, it is called as conversion disorder or functional neurological symptoms. So next time you see them, be kind and courteous. Factitious or fabricated illnesses. Symptoms are, again, intentional to gain attention. If it's done on oneself, it's called as Munchausen syndrome. And if it's done on the others, it's called as Munchausen by proxy. It's very common in female and in healthcare workers. So if the question says, a nurse is here or a HCA is here, uh, then you should be thinking of Munchausen. Remember, Munchausen by proxy could be a form of child or elderly abuse. In hypochondriasis, they have a specific illness phobia or illness anxiety disorder. Their mind is preoccupied with having a serious illness just as in this case. So the answer is hypochondriasis. Let us go to the second last question of the day now. What could be the cause of her presentation? meningeal inflammation, underanserton toxicity, deloxetine overdose, drug interaction, multiple sclerosis. A 39-year-old female is in the department with confusion. She is accompanied by her husband. She was earlier seen at the GP with vomiting and was discharged with oral onlancetron. Her observations are blood pressure of 175 by 90, heart rate 123, capillary refill 2 seconds and a temperature of 40.3. She has no other comorbidities apart from fibromyalgia, which is well controlled with deloxetin. You notice twitches on her calf muscles when the staff were changing her into a gown. Before we proceed to the answer, I want to highlight a few things again. If they have given you the name of the drugs in the question stem, they want you to know the pharmacological concerns such as QTC versus interactions versus adverse effects. Can become a good question towards common competencies curriculum. So know your drug interactions and know few things such as serotonin syndrome that is due to an increase in level of serotonin, neuroleptic malignant syndrome where there is reduced dopamine due to antipsychotics or missed dopa drugs in Parkinsonism, malignant hypothermia due to succamethonium or inhalational agents as we talked in the previous video. Remember serotonin syndrome could be due to SSRI alone or SSRI in combination with another SSRI or SNRI or Mao B inhibitor or there are three main drugs which we commonly use in our emergency department that is linezolid, ondansetrin and tramadol. Remember these three linezolid, ondansetrin, tramadol. Here she is on deloxetin and ondansetrin was prescribed. Is there a drug interaction? Possibly yes. 
so this could be serotonin syndrome whereas in neuroleptic malignant syndrome you get dystonia parkinson's like features because they have reduced dopamine so again you may have high autonomic hypersensitivity altered sensorium but there will be rigidity as compared to myoclonus in serotonin syndrome how do you treat them treat them with monitoring active and passive cooling and if required if required use dantrolene if you don't know where dantrolene is kept in your department i'm sure you will always find it in the theaters speak to the national poison control or tox base and they will guide you further antidotes for for treatment of neuroleptic malignant syn neuroleptic malignant syndrome is bromocriptine whereas the antidote for serotonin syndrome is cyproheptadine so the answer here is drug interaction finally we are at the last question for the day let's look at it as per the nice guidance of managing aggressive behavior what would be the most appropriate now put your hands back and leave the patient to settle ask the police to get more backup move the patient to a quieter environment consider consider i am haloperidol move to rhesus and give iv lorazepam and haloperidol a 27 year old male is brought by the police with drug abuse in custody while you are interviewing he becomes agitated and tries to push you the police intervenes and holds him there is no stigmata of head injury and his observations are normal except mild tachycardia he has no known psychiatric attendances in the hospital let us see the explanation now refer to the arkham guidance on management of aggressive behavior i will post a link to the guideline below do check it out whenever you come across an aggressive patient in the department think of seven h's head injury high temperature high or low sugars high or low sodium hash that is your drugs hypoxia and some hidden agenda first thing first move on to a quiet environment verbal de-escalation should be done no eye contact open arms gesture and communicate reassuring them that you are there to help them restrain is the next step physical then chemical physical restraint should be proportionate justifiable minimal and for the smallest duration possible if you think of chemical restraint then per oral then i am or if that's not possible go for iv iv restraint should always be done in a monitored way with antidotes on hand procyclidine flumazenil ava support instruments drug that could be used are lorazepam haloperidol or droperidol ketamine can be used phenargan can also be used look at your local trust policy so the correct answer in this question scenario would be move the patient to a quieter environment if you got them correct well done if you did not it is still fine as now we know what we did not know so guys that's all for now thank you for watching this video till the end if you like this video then please hit that like and subscribe button keep caring for your patients stay safe and blessed peace